All right, so following up to my video from last week, I'm going to be going over how you can take the 3D landmarks you placed in Slicer and use Slicer Morph um, to do the preliminary steps of geometric morphometrics. Now, if that's not a term you're familiar with, I'm not going to be going over that in this video. I'm going to be assuming some knowledge, um, but I will link to some resources in the description if you'd like to learn more about um, what geometric morphometrics is and how it works. Um, so for this uh, video, though, I'm basically going to be going over how you can take your landmarks and do the preliminary uh, Procrustes and PCA analysis in Slicer and then export those to other programs. So this is an example of, of just a basic PCA where I've exported the PC coordinates from Slicer um, and imported them into Mathematica to create this graph. Um, and then I have also exported some models from Slicer of what the shape of the vertebrae look like at different points in the PC space. Um, exported from Slicer, rendered in Blender, and then used Illustrator to put this all together. So I'm just going to be showing how you can start this process using the tools in Slicer Morph. Uh, so first, you'll need to make sure you have Slicer Morph installed, which you can just do by clicking on it. Extensions, install extensions. I already have it installed, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, and then we'll go to the GPA module of Slicer Morph. So if you go to the modules tab, if you've installed Slicer Morph, you should see it at the top here, and you'll see three submenus. Um, we'll look under geometric morphometrics and then we want to go to gpa okay so with the gpa or generalized procrustes analysis module open um, we can start by loading in our landmark files so i'm not going to load data in how i usually would um, which is by clicking this add data button instead i'm going to go within the gpa module and click select landmark files Okay, so this again is data from my uh, thesis on lumbar vertebrae. These are all the landmarks um, I took. Each one represents an individual vertebrae, and I am just going to select them all and open. And now nothing has visibly changed, but if I click this drop down menu, I can see that all these files have been loaded in. Um, I'll also want to set an output directory, which I've just been using the same folder to. And that is where your PCA and um, Procrustes coordinates are going to get exported uh, in a nice format that can be used in other software. So now I have the option to exclude landmarks if I want. Um, this is where knowing what landmarks and what order is useful. I'm not going to do that. I want all the landmarks in this analysis. Um, you also have the option to skip scaling during the GPA, but I'm not going to do that. So I'll click Execute GPA plus PCA. Sometimes it doesn't look like it's doing something for a while, but it worked pretty quickly here. And now we'll already start to see some results. So this is a mean shape, but shown in slice view. The This is our PCA window right now. It's just showing um, the first, uh, or I guess it's showing the Procrustes distances, but we can also use it to visualize the PCA. Um, and then this is a table of the distances. So if you want to right away just get your landmark data out to go directly into R or your other coding language of choice, um, you can click this button, View Output Files. You could also navigate to it in your directory. And you will see these different... Um, tables that have been output, um, depending on what you want, you could just directly use the uh, PC scores as output from Slicer. Um, but it will also give you the Procrustes uh, landmarks if you want to be doing all of your statistical analysis in a, a separate program. Um, so. And, and what's really nice about this is it's essentially formatted for the it's essentially formatted for the geomorph package and in R. 
um, except it, your Procrustes analysis is already done, which is really nice. Um, you also get the Procrustes distance from the mean for each of your uh, specimens, and then you also get a centroid size, which is really nice if you kind of want to backtrack the landmark coordinates. Um, so if you're just interested in getting your landmarks out of uh, Slicer in a nice format, that is the way to do it. But there are some other good tools in Slicer Morph that you can use if you go to this Explore Data slash Results tab. And what you may not realize right away is that there is a mean shape being visualized in this 3D viewer here. It just, for some reason, always starts really zoomed in. Um, so I generally have to move it a little bit and then use my scroll wheel to zoom out. But here you can see the mean shape represented as this cluster of points with each landmark labeled. Okay, so this explore data slash results tab has a few different useful options. The mean shape is displayed by default um, when you run your GPA, but you have some options that you can play around with to change how it's displayed. Uh, next, we have a landmark variance plot option. So I'll just show that very quickly by selecting the ellipse type and clicking plot LM variance. Um, and what this is showing is how much the specific landmarks are varying. Um, so in my vertebrae case, uh, it's hard to tell what these are, but these two that are varying a lot are the tip of the neural spine. Now, keep in mind, this tool was not designed to sit here and say, oh, these are more variable landmark points. They must have some biological significance. They were really designed um, for the detection of maybe switched landmarks so, could, because if most of your landmarks look like this and then you have one really big, that's probably telling you you might have swapped or made a mistake. Um, and going back to the neural spine example, I know there's no mistake with these, just knowing my data, um, but I still wouldn't want to make a declaration that the neural spine is more variable than other parts of the vertebrae, because a big reason that these are more variable is because they're the furthest out from the centroid of the shape of the landmarks that I choose. So because of how geometric morphometric works, they're just inevitably going to be more variable. Uh, because of that. Um, I'm going to turn this off by clicking none and clicking plot LM variance again. And then we also have an option to look at the lollipop vectors. Um, and you can do this by you've got a red, green and blue option. And then you can select which PC you want to visualize. So I'm just going to show PC one, click lollipop vector. And now what this is showing is the direction that the landmarks are moving, um, if I remember correctly, from negative to positive along the PC. This might be of interest to you. I don't find this visualization particularly helpful, so I'll get to what I find really helpful for visualizing these shape differences um, in a second. And I'm going to turn this back off. Um, finally, if you want a preliminary look at your PC without having to put that data into R, um, you do have the option to do a scatter plot. So I'm just going to select PC1 and PC2 um, and then click scatter plot. And you'll see here um, getting these, you have an option for splitting these by a different factor or group. Um, I find that easier to do in like R Mathematica. Um, but so this is just for a preliminary look. Um, but you can hover over each point and see where it falls. And that'll give you at least a decent idea of what shapes are closer to the mean and what are further out. All right, so I've showed a few ways to visualize the shape differences along the different PCs. Um, but especially looking at this, um, I know this is a vertebrae, but no one else looking at this knows that this is a vertebrae. This is, it's really hard to intuit from what I've shown so far. So now we're going to be looking at the interactive 3D visualization, which is a super cool feature um, that lets you 
really intuitively visualize these shape differences. So I'm going to switch from mean shape visualization, which is what you're seeing now, to 3D model visualization. Um, and then I'm going to load in what is called a reference model. So I already have one set up. This is the third lumbar vertebrae from a beaver. And I've selected it because when I was looking at my data the first time, I found that the beaver was pretty close to the mean shape. Um, so it makes a good, good reference model, which can then be warped to visualize the different shapes um, across the PC in the morpho space. Um, next, Slicer Morph needs the landmark set for this vertebrae. Um, I have that kind of separated out just to make my life a little bit easier right here. So you have to make sure these match. You will get really funky errors if either the landmark set is off or your model is off for whatever reason. For instance, if it's been mirrored, I've done that a lot since I did a fair amount of mirroring um, and putting this data set together. But once you've selected your landmark set and your um, model, you can click apply. All right, so once you click apply, you should see two models appear that look the same. Um, one that is yellow, which represents the mean shape and then one that is blue that you're going to be able to warp. So to be extra clear, this is not, this mean shape is not what the beaver vertebrae looks like normally. It has been warped to fit the mean landmarks here. So the right side is where we're actually going to be able to visualize how the shape changes along different axes of your morpho space. Um, and that is under this PCA visualization parameters. I'm just going to select the first uh, PC, PC1, since that's where the most variance is. Um, and then you'll see the slider that I can just drag back and forth. And as I do that, the beaver vertebrae that I loaded in warps to wherever the landmarks um, are positioned at that particular point. Um, along the axis of PC1. Um, so this is a pretty cool feature. You can also combine um, a look at, let's say, what is the positive end of PC1 plus the positive end of PC2 look like. And this is just a really fun way to play around um, with your data to really get an intuitive feel for it that I think is hard with the other methods of visualization. Um, just to quickly point out, you might notice that the actual value here, 100, does not line up with the value here, 0.4. Um, that is because this is a scaling factor and not the actual PC value. So my understanding um, is that it's essentially your 100% of the way along PC one in the negative direction or positive direction. One other caveat to be aware of is that you can really only trust the warping um, where you have landmarks. So to give you a really concrete example, you might notice that I have no landmarks on the transverse process of the vertebrae here. That's because it's broken off in like three quarters of my specimens. But because it's still part of the mesh, the transform that's being applied to warp the beaver vertebrae to these coordinates is still going to warp that transverse process. So you'll see it get really skinny, really long. It'll change its angle. And because I have no data on what the actual shape changes of that are, um, in my data set, I don't want to make any interpretations from those changes in the mesh. Um, and in fact, when I made this figure, I actually cl clipped off the transverse process just so it would be extra clear what the shape changes were that I could actually start to make some interpretations from. Okay, with all that said, 
let's say I want to export these models out of Slicer. Slicer does a lot of really cool things, but rendering I have never found it to be really great at, especially if you're going for paper quality figures. Um, so in order to do this, first I need to harden the transform, basically set in stone that this is the shape of the vertebrae, so it's not just a warp on top of the original beaver vertebrae. I'm going to do that by going to the data module, finding the PC warped volume. You should see that it's that blue color. Okay. I've zoomed in a bit for you. It's a little bit pixelated, so apologies about that. But what you'll see is each of these um, meshes has this little grid next to it, and only the PC warped volume has this bent grid, and that's representing that a transform is being applied to it. So I can right click on that symbol, and I can select Harden Transform. So now that's been applied, and the mesh is going to stay this shape. Okay, once I've hardened the transform, I can either right click and export to file or use the save button and then save it probably as an OBJ. I would also want to name it something like positive PC1 um, lumbar just so that I know that it is specifically representing the positive end of PC1 um, in this case. All right, and now I'm able to open this up in another program, MeshLab, and see that it has retained that warped shape. Um, and I can do further edit edits on this, including removing the vertex color that is making it automatically blue, um, cutting off the transverse process since I don't want to visualize that and whatever else.